For five long days, this woman had been unable to leave her home. Carried by the fire brigade and put safely into a lifeboat, she finally decided that enough was enough on Tuesday. But at my house, there's no heating, nothing, no electricity. I'm happy to go to a house where it's warm. In this small town on the northern tip of France, one in three residents have been forced out of their homes by historic floods, two in the space of just five days. The water reached its peak on Tuesday morning. As a result, in one house, everything has had to be thrown away. We emptied out the water and now it's rising back up. It's a nightmare. We lost everything. We've got nothing left. Since last Thursday, the family has had to live upstairs without electricity or heating. This is my grandfather. He's 88 years old. That's why we can't leave with the cold weather. He will catch a cold. It's a life cut off from the outside world. Looking out this window is the only way to monitor the water levels. It's been a week that we've been living this tragedy. The fire brigade, coupled with members of the local community, are doing their best to keep spirits up delivering coffee and hot meals to isolated residents. They're great. They brought us breakfast and a hot meal at lunch. The water levels began to recede on Tuesday, but the respite may be brief, with further rain forecast in the coming days. Three years of drought have forced more than a million people from their homes in Somalia, many of them into camps like this one in the capital Mogadishu. Now their shelters are being washed away by floods after days of torrential rains. It's raining for a fifth day. Our makeshift shelters were washed away. Children are missing now. We don't know whether they're dead or alive. We request the aid agencies to urgently help us. Most of the people in the camps were herders until the pastures became too dry and more than a million livestock died of thirst. Others were farmers who could no longer grow crops. Now, swathes of the countryside are underwater. The UN's Intercontinental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, says the Horn of Africa is one of the places in the world that's most vulnerable to the effects of climate change. There is quite a big irony around people fleeing for uh, the fact that they don't have water, and now fleeing because they have too much water. And so it's a real uh, dichotomy or problem that we're seeing. And the IPCC report quite clearly says that this cycle of flooding and drought is going to continue and we're going to see this more and more unless we really do something on a global scale to try to reduce these uh, and try to stay on this Paris 1.5 alignment. Decades of armed conflict as well as increased food prices exacerbated by Russia's invasion of Ukraine have made the crisis worse. The UN says more than 40,000 people died last year because of the drought, about half of them children. These floods are now killing even more. Hurricane Katrina. Hurricane Laura. Hurricane Delta. And Hurricane Ida. Four major hurricanes slamming the Louisiana coast. Three in just a span of two years. These record-breaking storms forcing communities to adapt to the devastating effects of climate change. Unfortunately, I think this is our new normal. The number of storms that we're seeing as I go from state to state and talk to these communities that have been impacted. We have to take it serious. We have to do our part now to make sure that future generations have a safe place to live. Reggie Ferreira, director of the Resiliency Leadership Academy at Tulane University, says the impact on mental health is staggering and long-lasting. These storms we experience here in Louisiana are quite devastating. We see impacts such as anxiety, depression, stress. A recent study said the pain is felt globally. About 85% of the world's population is already feeling the effects of human-caused climate change. Everything from worsening storms to more frequent wildfires and heat-driven health issues.